polio were one of the highest rates in the world. Malaria were still in the high brackets, and so many ailments and diseases. What our conditional cash transfers will do is this. We're saying that we will pay the poorest 25 million. That is over, we're phasing it. It's going to be over an extended period. We'll start with a certain number, and then we'll begin to phase it. We'll pay between five and 10,000 Naira to the poorest families who agree to register their children in school, to enroll their children in school, and also to participate in immunization. If they do those two things, then they are able to get a stipend on a monthly basis for a period. Now, now what that does, what that does is this. It ensures that those whose children are not in school get their children enrolled in school. It also ensures that they participate in immunization so that the overall healthcare cost is reduced and our health challenges are considerably reduced. Now, of course, you know that children who go to school today, many are not even fed going to school. Many do not have one meal before they get to school. But our free lunch for every child in primary school will take off from the moment where they are free lunch for every child in primary school. Now, there are many, there are many who will say, how are we going to fund? How are we going to fund? Nigeria's problem is not money. It is management of resources. It's not money. <laughs> and I'll explain why that is so. For the past five years, we have had the highest oil prices in the history of this country. Despite that, we are still poor. Our currency has just been devalued by almost 25% despite the fact that we have had the highest oil prices consistently for five years. So it doesn't matter whether the price of oil is $500 a barrel or $50 a barrel. If you manage the resources the way our resources are managed at the moment, we'll be where we are today, we'll be poor. So it's important for us to recognize that you will be voting in a government that will be known for its stand on corruption and transparency. They will be voting in a government that will take a strong stand. It will take a strong stand, it will take a strong position on corruption. Many people have raised the question that how are you going to be sure that this will be done? I think that the very one, one thing that everybody knows about General Buhari is that he is firm on corruption. That's one thing everybody knows about him, that he's very firm on corruption. Now, if the number one person is firm on corruption, down the line, the institutions will develop easily. Once the political will to fight corruption is there, be sure that corruption can be fought. What we're experiencing at the moment is an absence of political will. We have all the laws, we have all the institutions, we have everything, but there is no political will to fight corruption. If there were, we would not have 20 billion US dollars missing by the, CBN's own, by, the, by the CBN governor's account. Some say it's 12 billion US dollars. That is the kind of money some other countries, some other countries rely on that absolutely. And we have it somewhere. Nobody can even explain where it is. The kerosene subsidy, 7 billion US dollars, is what we have lost in the kerosene subsidy scam. No explanation, nothing. Some time ago, we heard that one billion was missing from the excess crude account. No explanation, nothing. 400,000 barrels of oil is said to be stolen every day. And let me just explain why that is so absurd. A barge, a barge that takes barrels of oil, takes 14,000 barrels of oil. We're talking of a daily, daily theft. Now, if 14,000 barrels of oil go into a barge, and it's been loaded into a tanker somewhere offshore. Somebody must see that. Some of it is lost due, some of it is taken off the pipelines. We agree. But there is somebody, somebody needs to explain to us how so much, so many barrels of oil um, are, th are stolen every day. And this is, not, this is not rocket science. Somebody is carrying them away in oil tankers. Somebody is using barges every day to carry this oil away. We mustn't forget that Ghana, despite all the noise, 
that Ghana makes about oil. It is still not producing 200,000 barrels of oil a day. And we are losing 400,000 every single day. So it's not, it's not about how much money we have. It's about managing what we have. It's about being serious about management of resources. If this country is serious about management of our resources, what we have today, nobody in this country needs to go to bed hungry. Nobody needs to go to bed hungry. The research is there for us to see. We've done all that we need to do. We're constantly engaging and constantly looking at all of the options. And one thing that is certain is that we have to block the leakages. We have to stop the bleeding. If we don't stop the bleeding, we will not have, even what we are, even our complaints today are meager. If we allow another four years of this kind of conduct, this kind of mismanagement of public resources, there will be nothing left. There really will be nothing left. And so we all, we, we all need to understand that the options open to us as we go into this election. It's an option of the survival of this nation. It's not about religion. It's not about tribe. It's not about ethnicity. No, it's not. When we want to win, when you want to win a football match, I don't care whether the person is from Ogun State or whether it's from Edo State. I choose the best 11. That's how to win a, a football match. Nobody ever asks the religion of the pilot that's flying us in the air. Nobody asks. We all want to know whether he's a good pilot. That's all. I don't ask him, are you a Christian or a Muslim? Or are you a traditional religionist? Nobody asks those questions. Why? Because we just want to get to our destination safely. That's all. And that is how we should treat our nation, Nigeria. We should not allow anybody to tell us that it's a fight about religion. Don't allow anybody to tell us that it's a fight about South, South, and Southwest, and Northeast. No. It is a fight for the future of our children. Everyone who is born today is at risk of joining the numbers of people who are dying on account of poverty. We have no reason to allow anybody to hoodwink us or to deceive us. It's a fight for the survival of this nation. This nation deserves the best. It deserves to be well managed. Our grandchildren deserve to be well treated. They deserve to go to good schools, receive perfect medical care, as with other countries of the world. Our universal health care system is one which we are working on very diligently. And, and, I, and I know that by the time that our, that our government is sworn in, we will begin to unfold the plans for this universal health insurance. One of the, one of the things that we're trying to do is to ensure that there is insurance, adequate insurance, to cover the cost of treating Nigerians at least basic medical care. We're able to give med basic medical care to any Nigerian. Now, the universal insurance scheme is simple. If, if, if 100 million people pay at least 1,000 1, naira, or just 1,000 naira, we can start off a universal health insurance scheme backed by the government. At the moment, we use Shore P funds in various ways. These Shore P funds are available everywhere. Many times they're just given to political leaders somewhere and they spend it anyhow, give their friends and, and, and their political acolytes. What we are meant to do with the huge Shopee resources, sometimes up to three billion US dollars, is to, is to dedicate it to a specific program. And it's our belief that if we dedicate it to healthcare or education, we will benefit more by it. So if we take that three billion US dollars or two billion US dollars from Shopee, and we dedicate it to universal health care, or dedicate it to free education, we'll be able to provide quality health care. India, that has the health care system that we all go to now, and is able to render it cheaply, started off with universal health insurance. You must have, you must start somewhere. You must, you must encourage industry. When you have universal health insurance, there'll be more money to build hospitals, more money to equip hospitals, more money to pay doctors, to encourage research and all that. And this, these are the kinds of plans that we have. I don't want to hold you up and take too much of your time because I know there will be questions to ask. And as you ask the questions, I'll be able to fill you more, in more on the details of the APC's policies. But as I said, I want to leave us with an important, with, with an important uh, piece of advice. And this is for all of us. Let us not assume that 
running this country is rocket science. Let nobody tell us.